Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at Roar and Write, an Animal Kingdoms game. Now I enjoy the much larger predecessor to this game called, well, Animal Kingdoms. And I thought this one was a really fun light game, but I never really played this and thought, I want something lighter and quicker. So when I saw Roar and Write, I was both intrigued because of how much I enjoyed the original, but also a little bit skeptical because I really wasn't sure I wanted a Roar and Write based on the original game. So in this game, you're going to be trying to decide who will be the monarch to rule over all. You must appease the five council members and do something else. So yes, there is a theme, but honestly, it's a roll and write game. I'm not looking for a thematic roll and write game, and I'm completely fine with there being no theme at all. Now, there is a kind of a very thin layer of a theme, but it does make much sense. The gameplay is a bit of pish your luck. One player is going to roll all the dice, and all the players can use whatever ones they want from the roll. Each age, you can fill up to six spots for a particular age, and at the end of the age, you're going to try and appease one of the animals in the council. And each animal will have a different set of requirements on how they score. For example, each set of three identical odd numbers are maybe going to get eight points, or the more number ones you have in a particular age, the more points you're going to get. It's your choice which animal to appease at the end of the age. You're also going to have to uh, weigh writing numbers in the current age against filling out the five kingdom sections that can also give you points at the end of the game. Also, each player has a unique number and combos, which they're going to get points for if you write them in the ages. So with lots of way to get points, this also has a very simple gameplay that underpines it. So, will this game be elected to join my select group of simple roll and writes that get constantly played? Or will it be cast aside, never to be considered again? Let's get at the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back with my final thoughts on Roar and Write. So here we have Roar and Write set up. Each player gets a sheet to write on, noting that each sheet is slightly different, the unique number and pairs of numbers is different on each sheet. Other than that, they're all identical. The council member cards are double-sided, so choose five out of the six animals. Then pick one per animal, so you have a total of five animal cards for the council for this game. The goal of the game, of course, is to get the most points. You'll get these points over five ages, and at the end of each age, you'll appease one of the council members. If you can do it early in an age, as there are three rolls per age, you'll receive a bonus. You'll also get points for appeasing different council members. If you can appease all five council members by the end of the game, you'll get the largest bonus. You'll also score points for your personal agenda, that is having a certain number written in your ages, and certain pairs in your ages. And finally, you're going to get points for completing the kingdom sections. The game is played over five ages, and each age consists of three rolls of six dice. To begin, one player will roll all the dice, and all the players will use this pool of dice. Each player can write zero to six of the dice in the current age, and of course you can only use each die once. Whatever dice you did not write into your current age from this roll, you can choose one of those and write it into one of the kingdom areas. If you want to write more than one number into a kingdom, again from the dice that you have not already used for this roll, for each one beyond the first, you must cross off one space in the current age, and it cannot be filled with a number later on. If you have no spaces left in your current age, you cannot take the extra die values in the kingdom. When you fill in the sixth spot of an age, you're going to circle the bonus for rolling that you completed the age in, here on the first roll, the second, or the last. So, if this was the roll, I could maybe write down these in the current age, and maybe use this one in one of the kingdom sections. When each player is finished, you're going to re-roll all the dice. After the third roll in an age, the age is over and each player will pick one of the council members to appease. Look at the values for that age and calculate the points from your chosen council member. Each player can choose whatever council member they wish. You jot down the letter of the council member, how many points you got from them, and then the total, which is the council member points plus any bonus for completing early. Then it's on to the next age, and the game ends at the end of the fifth age. Now just a quick note on the kingdom scoring. Whenever you're right in one of the kingdoms, you must follow any restrictions. In same, of course all numbers must be the same value. In small to big, you must follow the arrows and the next number you write must be larger than the previous number. In big to small, the number you write must be larger than the previous number. In the any value, you can write, of course, any values that you want. And the adds up to 14, 
you will then want the sum of all four numbers you write to equal 14. When you have written a number in each of the circles in the kingdom, if you have fulfilled the requirements, you're going to be circling the points. So after the fifth age, you total up all your points, determine the running points from the five ages, see how many of your personal and unique numbers you have written in the ages, not in the kingdoms, but only in the ages, and get those points, along with unique pairs of numbers. Next, circle the points from the number of different council members you appeased during the game. Again, if you appease all five council members, you're going to be getting 15 points. And finally, you calculate your totals from successfully completed kingdoms. Then, add all those together, and the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about RAR and write. So, theme and components. Honestly, I'm just going to skip over the theme for this one. It's a roll and write game, and what theme there is doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I assume they tried to get this theme to tie into its predecessor, but for me, it didn't exactly work. But again, honestly, it's a quick roll and write game, so I'm not expecting much uh, theme here. For the components, for the most part, I like them. The dice do take a little getting used to as they do look a, a, biz, a bit busy, but I ended up liking them and thought they were actually nice and a little different from regular dice. The council cards are nice quality and easy enough to read and understand. I do like the art in this game as it does try and tie this whole nature thing uh, theme together. The rulebook is okay, even with the oversight to the kingdom scoring and the rulebook not matching what's actually on the character sheets for the kingdom areas. And the rulebook just stops one sentence at one point. Nothing that's going to stop you from playing the game, but just something that probably should have been caught during production. The player sheets themselves, I really like that they were different from each other. It's nothing major, but the unique numbers and pairs were a nice touch to kind of just differentiate them a little bit. So on to the gameplay. As you saw from the overview, the game is super simple, and you've probably already made up your mind whether this game is for you or not. For me and my game group, I actually really enjoy this one. And this one is definitely going into my rotation for when my wife and I want to play like a quick 10 minute game. There is a trend lately of making these roll and writes more longer and complicated and having all these combos. And for the most part, I do want that. But every once in a while, I want something that is just quick, fun, and easy. And this one fits the bill perfectly. There is a little push your luck in this game. Uh, for example, if you roll two fives in your first roll and you decide to write them down, but in the second roll there's no fives, do you maybe switch strategy and go for something else? Or do you take that risk and don't take anything in the second roll? Or maybe you think, well, if I do have extra spaces left, maybe I can use the third roll to get extra uh, dice in this, the kingdom scoring areas. Getting all the different council members as well can be a, worth a good chunk of points. But if you can do the same high scoring council members several times during the ages, that might be worth even more points. Again, it's a little bit of push your luck combined with light decision points in a quick game is what kind of made this game enjoyable for me. Now, of course, there are a few negatives to the game. It is multiplayer solitaire. What your opponents does or doesn't do makes no difference to what you do. The unique, num the unique numbers and pairs can sometimes just kind of work in the player's flavor. If there's a council member who wants all twos and your, new your unique numbers too, those points are just a bonus that you don't have to work for. The council member cards are also nothing special and each animal is usually just a variation of the theme like the wolves. It's just they all add up to a certain number. But for a game that's quick and easy, I'm kind of willing to look these things over. So would I recommend this game? Yes, I would. For me, this is a perfect example of a light filler game. One that is super easy and quick to play, offers some variation from game to game, and at the end of the day, I just had a great time playing it. I like the components in the game. The game is easy to explain and quick to get to the table. The basic dice rolling and slight uh, push your luck was enjoyable, especially if it all came together in the end. I like that the game through the council members and the unique numbers and pairs changed the game slightly from game to game. I do wish though that the animals were a little more different or maybe a few more with some advanced options. I also would have liked a bit more variation of the kingdom scoring. Maybe even some variations on the player sheets as well, just to kind of uh, change things up a bit. But overall, I'm actually going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10, the Dice Tower Seal of Approval. Yes, it has simple gameplay. Yes, it doesn't have a huge depth of strategy that's going to keep coming back from week to week. Yes, the theme makes no sense. And yes, the game might lack variety in the long run. But when after playing a game where the push your luck didn't quite go my way and I say, let's play again, and everyone at the table agrees eagerly, I can't argue with that. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.